Strange Wills. Starring the distinguished Hollywood actor Warren William and featuring Lorene Tuttle and John Brown with Howard Culver and an all-star Hollywood cast. Original music by Del Castillo. Dead men's wills are often strange. We cannot attempt to understand them or try to find the answers. We can but tell the story. This is Warren William bringing you the story of The Girl from Shadowland. But first, a word from your announcer. The Girl from Shadowland, with Warren William as John Francis O'Connell. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. This honorable probate court is now in session. Be seated, please. You may call the first case, Mr. Clerk. The probate case of Lucifer Nikolai, deceased. If the court please, I would like to mention very briefly the background of this, well, unusual matter... You may proceed, Mr. O'Connell. Lucifer Nikolai, perhaps I should say Professor Lucifer Nikolai, deceased, left a last will and a testament which I wish to bring to the attention of this honorable court. Has the estate of the late professor been inventoried? Yes, Your Honor. The entire estate is of no monetary value. It consists of a diary. The diary of Professor Lucifer Nikolai. Perhaps the diary has sentimental value. To whom was it left? If the court please, the deceased has no heirs, no next of kin. He left his diary, in his own words, to a world of fools and skeptics. Have you read the diary, Mr. O'Connell? Unfortunately, I have. In your opinion, has it any practical value or scientific data that may prove of value to humanity? That, Your Honor, I am not in a position to answer. This much I can say, however... Professor Lucifer Nikolai was either the greatest scientist of all time, or he succeeds Ananias as the king of liars. With the uh, court's permission, I would like to read the diary of the late Professor Nikolai. And at the conclusion thereof, let the court determine what should be done with this only asset of the late professor's estate. Very well. You may proceed, Mr. O'Connell. The diary of the late professor begins on the 5th day of May, 1941. His first entry reads as follows. For the last 10 years, I have been preparing myself for this, the greatest scientific experiment the world has ever known. Man has conquered the present, pierced the future, and I, yes, I shall uncover the past. It's a scientific fact that every act that has occurred on this earth since the beginning of time has been permanently photographed on light waves. These waves, as we know, travel at the speed of 186,000 miles per second. If then it is possible for science to make the mind travel at a faster rate of speed, it can catch up and pass these light waves, which have been present since the very creation of life. The dark ages of history shall be pierced and man's concept of life shall be shaken unto its very foundations. For 10 years I have been experimenting with electrical impulses that will separate the mind from the body and direct it at incredible speed into the shadow land of the past. I am now ready. This day I shall choose the subject for my experiment. 
And uh, how old are you, young lady? I'm 21, sir. You stated you are an orphan? Yes, for as long as I can remember. Mm -hmm. Alice, uh, your application says that you like to read, that you have a good imagination. Oh, yes, sir, that's right. I do like to read. Oh, all sorts of books. And I like to imagine that I... Yes, I know. You are the beautiful girl who falls in love with the hero. Hmm? Yes. <laughs> yes. But not always, Professor. Once I imagined that I visited the moon. And then when I read 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, I was... A whale, no doubt. <laughs> oh, no, Professor. Oh, no. I was a mermaid. A beautiful mermaid. Hmm. Well, Alice, where I'm going to send you will make all these other places seem like a, a trip on the subway. Oh, Professor, I love to travel. And you shall, too, young lady. In fact, at a speed that you never believed possible. No one ever dreamed it possible. You shall travel at the speed of almost 500,000 miles per second. 500,000 miles a second? Oh, that sounds awfully fast, Professor. <laughs> I didn't know they made planes that could this go that... This won't be on a plane, Alice. No? Why else could anyone go that fast? You shall see, Alice. You shall see. The next entry is dated June 12, 1941. It reads, I am ready for my first experiment into Shadowland. My home in this desolate part of the state has been transformed into an electrical workshop. Alice is calm at ease. I have given her a sedative to rest her nerves before she takes off on her first journey. I do not want her to go too far, only back to the Middle Ages. Yes, only back to the Middle Ages. Now, Alice, don't be frightened with all this electrical equipment. It's, uh, well, it's like a spaceship ready to take you away. It looks scary. Now, walk over here with me to this chair. Mm. Uh, careful not to trip on any of the wires. Oh. Oh, yes, Professor. Now, sit down, please. I want to tell you what's going to happen so that you won't be frightened. Oh? Alice, I am going to separate your mind from your body. Separate my mind from my body? Oh, Professor, no, no. I'm going to send your mind out into space. You're going to see things and go places that no living human being has ever been before. Well, I... Come back, Professor? Of course you will. In fact, really, you'll never leave this room. Only your mind will make the trip. And while you're gone, your mind will talk to me through your lips. Where am I going, Professor? You're going back to the early Middle Ages, Alice. Back to... Back to the early Middle Ages? Well, how, how oh, can I go there? Don't worry about that. That's my job. I want you to tell me everything you see. Everything. Alice, if our experiment works, next time I shall send you back even further. Back to the glamorous days of Antony and Cleopatra. Oh. You shall float down the Nile in a silken barge. Oh, I would adore seeing her. Cleopatra, the most beautiful of all women. But the thought frightens me. Oh, don't be frightened, Alice. Please, believe me, you will be safe. Now then, if you're ready, sit back and relax. Professor? Yes, Alice? This looks just like a picture of an electric chair I saw once in a newspaper. What is it? This is known as electromagnetic radiation. We will shock the mind loose from the body and send it flying into light. These waves of light which we will pass will recreate, even down to the minutest detail, the events of the past. But how will when I... When I shut off the dynamo, your mind will stop its journey and remain stationary on a certain light wave. According to my calculations... That light wave should be one from the Middle Ages. After you have seen and told me everything, I shall start the dynamo and bring you safely back. Do you understand? All I know is that I'm going somewhere awfully fast. And that wherever you go, no one of today has ever been. All right, I shall start the electricity. Oh. Look into my eyes, Alice. Look. Look. You're tired, so sleepy. Mm. You cannot hold your eyes open another moment. They're closing, closing. Mm. Your head is nodding. You're asleep, mm. asleep. Mm. Yes, you're asleep, 
and ready to travel on your first journey to Shadowland. Now I press a button, and your mind, it is off on a long journey. What will happen to it? We shall soon know. Yes, we shall soon know. 1,200, 900, 700, 600. There, it's far enough. I shall stop between the years five and 600. Now, now we're ready to learn the first secret from the dark past. Speak, Alice. Speak. Where are you? What do you see? Hurry, hurry, I must bring you back soon. There's but little time. She has long, beautiful yellow golden hair. Her dress is long and flowing. Her eyes are blue and smiling. She is so beautiful, so beautiful. There is a man upon a horse, a white horse. His face is covered with a visor. His body is concealed in a coat of mail. He's riding up to where she is sitting. Seest thou well, my dearest Guinevere? Aye, my king and master. From this hilltop I can see the justing ground from end to end, and even more. And even more, my queen? There's naught else but forest and glen. Oh, I can clearly see the brave knights of the round table in shining armor astride their steeds. See, Arthur, beloved, how they cast their glances upward. They are anxiously waiting for their beloved king and leader to join them. I shall join them anon. Arthur, against whom dost thou ride this day? Charles of Melton, a splendid knight and an able horseman. Tis said he is the justing champion of the lowlands. Then, my lord, be on guard, or my king and master may perchance find himself unhorsed. King Arthur unhorsed? Ah, oh, thou jokest, Guinevere. Truly thy tongue dost wag in a manner uncontrolled. By my yellow beard, I swear that the seat of Charles of Melton will feel the greensward in the very first rush, and I shall make fair wager with thee. Wager? What have I to wager, my lord, but the great love I bear thee? I wager a kiss against a kiss, that ye shall hear the multitudes below cry out the name of their king in final token of victory. A kiss against a kiss. Tis done, my lord. I shall accept the wager. Might I offer thee a flower from my hair in token of early victory? Wait, here it is. A flower plucked from hair of gold. Tis well, tis well. Victory is now a certainty. Oh, purse thy lips, beloved. I shall return to feast upon their honey. Farewell, Guinevere. Farewell. Arthur. Yes, beloved. I shall purse my lips in eager readiness, whether it be victory or defeat. Picture is fading. I'm going tired. Tired. Wait, Alice. I shall bring you back. Yes, I shall bring you back. But we have won, Alice. For the first time since creation, we know how to pierce the veil of Shadowland. All the secrets of the past are ours. I shall show these idiots what a mastermind can do. Yes, I shall show them. Part two of The Girl from Shadowland in just a moment. But first, a brief message from your announcer.
And now back to The Girl from Shadowland with Warren William as John Francis O'Connell. Professor Nikolai's diary continues. November 3rd, 1941. The last few months have been spent in improving the electrical impulses of my equipment in order to bring even greater cosmic speed to the journey which Alice will soon take. Everything is ready for this new experiment. Alice has rested and has regained the youthful appearance which she lost after her last trip. For I know now that only youth can withstand the rigors of these journeys into Shadowland. At four o'clock, she comes into my laboratory. She is anxious now to begin her trip. She's had a strange look in her eyes that bothers me. Lately, she's been losing interest in worldly matters and speaks only of her experiences in the mystic realm of Shadowland. I wonder what will happen to her this trip. I wonder. Please hurry, Professor. Please hurry. I've waited so long to go back. Just a moment, Alice. Just a moment. And then you shall be off. Off on a tremendous new adventure. Will I see the lovely lady with the golden hair? The one who is called Guinevere? No, no, Alice. But you shall see something far more interesting. Much, much older. You shall see one of the secrets of civilization. You shall see, if my calculations are correct, the building of the Great Pyramid. Well, that, that's in Egypt, isn't it, Professor? Yes, you're right, Egypt. But the Egypt of over 5,000 years ago. 5,000 years ago. Think of it, Alice. Oh. You shall actually witness the building of this phenomenon of man, one of his greatest miracles. Egypt, 5,000 years ago. Oh, how wonderful. Yes. There we are. Relax, please. That's it. Now then, look at me into my eyes. You're tired. So tired. Mm -hmm. Close your eyes, Alice. Close mm -hmm. them. Oh, so slowly. You see, you can't open them now because you're sleepy. Sleepy. So sleepy. And now you're going away for a little while. Going out into Shadowland. Your own shadow land that no one has ever visited. I shall turn on the current. Slowly at first. So slowly. I must not hurt your precious mind. Now I increase the volume very, very carefully. And now the shock. I press this little button. Your mind is freed. Freed from your tired body. You're now on your way to shadow land. 18th century. 14th. Tenth, seventh, third, a thousand BC, two thousand BC. You're nearing the end of your journey just a while longer. Three thousand. Yes, you're there. I shall stop the motor. I can't stop it. I can't stop it. Six thousand, fourteen thousand, sixty thousand, ninety, two hundred, two hundred and fifty thousand. Two hundred and fifty thousand BC. 250,000 years before Christ. What will she see? What will she see? Speak to me, Alice. What do you see? I see a man. But he's not really a man. His body is covered with fur. He looks like an ape. There's steam. Steam everywhere. It's a swamp. The man walks on his hands and his feet. And now he's standing up and looking over the steaming swamp. He carries a huge club in his furry hand. <gasps> he hears something. He's hiding behind a large fern. There's a strange creature coming out of the swamp. It looks like a snake, but it has fat, short legs. Its tongue darts out as though it senses the presence of this, this, this ape man. Its tail is huge, so long I can't see all of it. It swings from side to side, knocking over plants and trees. This, this reptile's eyes are small, red, terrifying. Now this ape-like man has stepped out into the open. He is facing this horrible creature. He's raising his club. The ape man struck the creature on the head. It looks stunned. It has raised up its body. It's looking down on the ape man. His eyes are red, flaming. 
flaming red, ugly. He's trying to grasp the ape man between his sharp, powerful legs. The ape man is backing away. Now he's circling the animal. Oh, he's tripped. He's fallen. He has his huge feet on the ape man's body. It's going to crush him. But wait, wait. The ape man has escaped. He's on his feet. He's circling again. He's... Now, he's struck the creature again on the head. He's raining blows on his body. The huge animal is stunned. The ape man yells. I go! The beast has fallen on his side. The ape man is staggering. His fur is covered with blood. He's walking carefully up to the head of this jungle creature. He touches it with his foot. The creatures is dead. And the ape man cries out in victory. He has won. I'm bringing Alice back. I'm greatly worried and perturbed. A change is taking place in her. Her forehead is receding, and the contour of her head seems to be changing. I see a slight fuzz appearing on her face and arms. Her eyes seem to be receding into her head. They're growing smaller. Or, or maybe, maybe I'm losing my mind. I'm afraid I, I've left her too long in the outer darkness. In just a few more minutes, she will return. Just a few more minutes. Alice, just a few more minutes, and you shall be back. She's still changing in physical appearance. Her shoulders and neck are completely covered with soft fur. What is happening? What is happening? I must write quickly in order that posterity and science will know what is taking place and that I have succeeded in this, the greatest scientific experiment of all time. I have rediscovered the past. I therefore control the future. The world is mine. I am the master of creation. Oh. Oh, she's back. She's back. Perhaps I was not too late after all. Ah! No, no, it can't be. Alice, Alice, stay there. Don't break your straps. No, no, don't come near me. I'll save you. I'll save you. No, Alice. No, you fool. The world is ours. We are masters of destiny. No, no, no. <laughs> And that, if the court please, is the last entry in this weird fantasy that Professor Lucifer Nicolai left to posterity and the world. Well, Mr. Connell, I must say it's rather an unusual, terrifying legacy. But um, what is your answer to this ending? Of course, the man was mad. Is that not your opinion as well? <laughs> well, Your Honor, considering that there's no proof of what actually took place... In fact, no proof that there ever was even a girl named Alice. The answer must be that the professor was actually mad. However, I personally examined the laboratory. I interviewed the neighbors. I took down the sworn statement of George Montgomery, who was the first to enter the laboratory after he heard the doctor scream. My son and I heard a terrible scream from this man's house as we were driving by, and, and we ran in. The door to the room where he had all of this electrical equipment was locked, and, and we had to break it down. The door's locked, son. I'll have to break it in. Here, Dad, let me help. <coughs> I don't know what we heard in here. It sounded like murder. Here, take this cane. Come on, let's go. Okay, Dad. It came from in here. Hey, wait. Wait, I'll, I'll open the door. Okay. Good heavens. Looks like a cyclone struck. Dad, Dad, look. There's a man lying over there under the window. He's dead. Dead as a mackerel. Look at those welts on his neck, strangled. And those marks look as though the hands were huge and strong. Gee, Dad, look. All this machinery in here, it's all tipped over and broken. Yes. I've heard that the dead man was a scientist of some kind or other. Never let anyone come in. Well, I'd better telephone the police. Say, Dad. Yes, son? Did you see anyone in this room when we first came in? See anyone in the room? What do you mean? Well, gee, I thought... Well, maybe not. Speak up, son. Tell me what you saw. Oh, ga gosh, Dad. I, I thought I saw a big gorilla step out the window just as we came in. Honest, I did, Dad. Honest. Of 
course, Mr. O'Connell, this was just the imagination of a boy. There was no gorilla, was there? But there might have been, Your Honor. You see, one of the gorillas from Slade Circus escaped just three days prior to this unusual incident. But I was informed that it was recaptured about two weeks later and is now back with the circus. They claim that it was a young female, the pet of the circus, and utterly harmless. So the professor might have been killed by the gorilla. Or by Alice. I see. Well, what is your opinion in the matter of Professor Nikolai's diary, Mr. O'Connell? I suggest, if the court please, that because nothing contained therein has any substantiation in fact, that the said diary be turned over to the medical branch of State College for further study and contemplation by their psychiatric experts. <laughs> Warren William will be back in just a moment. But first, here is a word from your announcer. And here again is Warren William as John Francis O'Connell. Is there any doubt in your minds but what the late Professor Lucifer Nikolai was mad? Well, <laughs> there isn't any in mine. No, sir. I want to sleep nights. Next week, I have a story to tell you that to say is different is putting it mildly. An emerald prospector down in Colombia saw a picture in an old magazine which he found in the jungle. It was a girl's picture, but more, it was the picture of Patsy Bubbles Moran, queen of burlesque. Well, our old prospector then and there decided to leave his emerald mine to this charming and alluring girl. And uh, did she take the emerald mine? Well, <laughs> as Grant took Richmond, so did Bubbles Moran ahead for Columbia. But what happened after her she arrived is another matter. We call this unusual story, Emeralds Come High. This is Warren William, inviting you to be with us again next week. Strange Wills is written by Ken Crepine and directed by Robert Webster Light. Names, places, and events have been changed so that no reflection can fall on any person or persons, living or dead. This is a Teleways feature produced in Hollywood. Hollywood.